So the suspension system for my sword is complete. Leather, stainless steel rings, oak wood bridge. Uh, made a holster slash pouch for the axe. I uh, originally planning on running it through one of the rings, but didn't work out so well. Uh, pretty much a one size fits all belt, and it is completely adjustable and removable, so I can raise or lower how I want the trailing end of the scabbard to hang when I'm moving around. So I finally had a chance to make it to Tandy Leather this past weekend and I picked up some a side of 6-7 ounce leather. Uh, normally I would use something a little heavier to make a sword belt type thing, but I uh, wanted to keep it fairly inexpensive. I also wanted something that was soft and supple, something easy enough to bend because I'm going to um, I'm going to fasten this by folding it in on itself and uh, tying it that way, uh, much like some of the older belts were done. Um, as near as I can guess, and a little bit of research I've done, is um, most of these things were kind of a one-size-fits-all. They stuck them through the buckle, pulled them as tight as they needed to, and then looped them over and left the excess hang. Uh, not uncommon. We've pretty much all seen that done in multiple areas. Uh, so I wanted to be able to do that, but I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on the leather, on the leather so I went ahead and went with a 6-7 ounce. I still think it'll be plenty durable enough to hold the sword, the axe. I have these stainless steel hand-rolled rings. Uh, my father-in-law brought them over to me a couple years ago. They've been sitting in a box in my cabinet. Uh, I think they're going to be perfect for it. I'm going to use one on the left side to hang the suspension system for the sword, one on the right side so that I can put my axe on it, and I will probably put one in the back of the belt somewhere to allow me to clip other things to it, uh, pouches for just random stuff because there's not going to be any pockets in the Viking costume, so I'm going to need some place to carry this stuff. So I got a minimum length on the belt and took some kind of estimates on where I wanted the rings, so I had an idea of about how long I needed each strip to be. I cut a straight edge on the more ragged side of the leather, uh, which was also, as I mentioned, the shorter side. Set the strap cutter to an inch and a half and cut a strip off of the side using the straight edge as my guide with the strap cutter. I squared the ends on the pieces using the grid on the cutting mat and then made a couple marks on the leather that I'm going to use to uh, cut out a small section on each side so that the rings fit a little better. Use the handy Dragon Con shot glass to approximate some semblance of a nice smooth round edge. And then cut the curves out with scissors. I'm going to do this in every place that the leather joins a ring. Measured and marked the first strip, tacked on an extra little bit so that I can fold over to rivet it, cut it off, and then made the notches for the ring. traced out the patterns for the second strap and then didn't have quite enough length on the original strap that I cut so I just grabbed another random scrap piece of leather that I had that was of the same size and weight uh, traced out the end on that and then cut that with a strap cutter to whatever length was there and that's how long the belt's going to be. With all the straps cut out, I went through and cut the notches for the rings on all of the segments of the belt, and then used my shot glass once again to round off the end, uh, just to make something so it's not just a ragged strip piece of leather. I wasn't originally going to do any carving or stamping on this, but I didn't really want to leave it just bare, so I dug into the Celtic Knot stamp set that I've got, that I picked up at Tandy for cheap quite a few years ago. Uh, laid it out on the belt and kind of centered it by eye as best I could and then drew a couple real light marks with an awl 
to use as a guide for when I was stamping. Now this isn't a continual loop stamp, that would have been great, but I don't have one of these, so I had to stamp each individual piece. And it wouldn't quite fit for the last one, so I found one that sort of matched and used that to stamp the pieces right beside the rings. And since I do learn from my mistakes, this time I started in the middle of the segment and worked my way out. And for the final strip that was real, real long, I just started at one end and worked my way to the other. Dampened the leather with some water and beveled the edges. So I'm going to antique this using just Tandy gel antique. I said dark brown. Uh, pair of gloves. I'm going to use a wool dauber. It's a fairly small area, so I'm not going to waste a big piece of sheepskin or anything like that. Uh, some paper towels and a damp sponge nearby just in case I screw something up like I did the last time. I haven't done a whole lot of antiquing. I used it on the scabbard and I've played with it once or twice on other small projects, but uh, it takes a little practice getting a good uh, even application and wiping off, and then how long do you leave it on there? Do you leave it on there for a long time or just a little time? So still had to play with it a little bit. Nice thing about it is if you take it off too soon on one section and it's too dark, you can always just go through and wipe it evenly. And for the longer section of the belt, I worked in small segments, wiping towards the other piece as I was going to try and help blend it in case I didn't quite get it even. Stamping didn't come out too bad. It looks kind of curvy in one section, but that's actually the leather, not the stamping. Trust me. Normally I edge everything in black. Uh, it makes a nice sharp contrast and looks really, really good in my opinion, but I'm going to break from my normal tradition on this time, and I'm going to edge this in medium brown. I would have done dark brown, but I don't have any, and I could mix up some medium brown and some black to make it darker, but I'm too lazy for that. I'm going to use Q-tips and a little Dixie cup to dish out just a little bit of dye, hopefully, without making a big mess. Admittedly, Q-tips aren't really the best solution for this, but worked pretty well if you're just really, really careful and really, really patient. I'm really not very good at burnishing edges. I've done a lot of reading about it, but still haven't really perfected my technique. Uh, the first technique I used was I dampened the edge and rubbed it with saddle soap and some canvas. Uh, that worked pretty well. The second technique is I dampened the edges, put a saddle soap on there very generously, and then used a Harbor Freight burnishing wheel, it's just a little plastic thing, uh, to burnish it. That actually came out pretty good, and for a longer project like this, that was the way to go in my opinion. So for the straps that hold the sword, the scabbard, since it's not going to hold the sword, it's going to hold the scabbard. For the straps that hold the scabbard to the ring on the belt, I have these two little thingies. I think we got them at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Uh, they're an inch. And I have some, eh, I'm guessing, four or five ounce leather. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these into about a three quarter inch strip. And I don't know how long I'm going to need, so I'm going to cut a couple of strips and then just have to adjust it from there. But my goal for this is, is that I want something that attaches to the belt that is removable and adjustable. So I can't just fold these things over and rivet them. That would be really easy, but that's not what I'm going to do because that's not how I do things. I have to do things the hard way. Now I will loop these through like this and then back over and what I will do is I will rivet this side here onto the slider and then I will take this piece here wrap it around the sword up through the ring down through there and down through there and if I did it right should be adjustable, but still solid and hold.
So I rounded the edges on each one of the straps, wiped them down with water, and used a stitching groover to just make a line so that they sort of matched the rest of the belt with, you know, something they weren't just bare leather straps. And then more antiquing, working in segments a little bit at a time. The antiquing really makes the engraving and stamping and stuff like that, if you do it right anyways, it does, uh, really makes it stand out. You'll notice the difference between these pieces and the pieces that I dyed when I make the axe holster later on in the video. The, the contrast just isn't there. Made a paper template of the part that's going to attach the bottom suspension system to the sword. Uh, it's just a piece of leather that I'm going to cut out so that it kind of wraps around and then lace onto the scabbard to hold it. A few test fits and when I had it reasonably tight I punched some holes and I'm just going to run the lace through there and like I said I'm going to use the lace to hold this thing in place so I don't have to actually fasten it to the scabbard. That way if I want to move it or I'm not happy with it I can change it. Well, everything stamped and dyed and antiqued, I started punching holes for the rivets and the rings. And once I had the holes punched with the hand rivet, I used double cap rivets and just set them with the cheap, inexpensive little hand tools that I've got. Rinse and repeat. And for the leather piece that goes around the bottom of the scabbard, once I had it uh, antiqued, I punched holes in the outer uh, edges and then folded them in half and punched holes again so that I had plenty of material just to make sure, since this is going to be holding a little bit of the weight of the scabbard, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of material that wasn't going to tear through, the strings weren't going to tear through. And then just went through and stitched everything together, uh, trying to make sure that I didn't get the string on the wrong side of the... Uh, ring, which I did once or twice. Tied everything off and cut the pieces inside the thing so the knot is not visible. I slid it over the end of the scabbard and laced it in place, pulling the laces reasonably tight, which holds it exactly where I want it on the scabbard, but leaves it adjustable if I decide I want to change it later. Took a chunk of oak for the wood bridge and just kind of just started drawing something. I have no idea what I'm really doing, so I just drew something. Sanded the edges flat and started chiseling pieces out a little bit at a time with the metal cutting bandsaw. Not the ideal tool for this, but don't have a wood bandsaw. And once everything was cut out, I went through and sanded it to rough shape and got rid of all of the square rough edges uh, just to make it nice and presentable. <laughs> Filed out the grooves where the lacing is going to go and that's what will hold this piece onto the scabbard itself. And took it back inside, laid it on the table and as tight as I could used Latigo lace, uh, should be strong and durable and resist tearing when I pull it real tight to secure the wooden bridge to the scabbard and then I did the bottom. And just in case you're wondering, pretty much the purpose of this as near as I can tell is just to hold the straps that hold this to the suspension system in place. Did a test fit and test layout to make sure that everything was going to work the way I was hoping it was going to. Um, I'm not going to trim the straps yet. I'll probably wait a few weeks and give it a chance to make. let me think about it before I do anything permanent. But with the straps in the bottom suspension and the slider buckles, it is completely adjustable. And then moving on to the part for the X. Uh, just took a scrap piece of leather, squared it off, measured out a couple of lines, uh, an inch and a half, which is the width of the belt, uh, and used hole punch to do a top and bottom hole and then cut them out with a razor knife in the middle. Uh, and all these are is just about grooves where the belt's going to go through the pouch.
grab something round and random to round off the edges. Uh, leather, sharp, straight edges don't tend to work out well. They always end up getting bent and twisted. Then cut a one inch strip that will actually hold the X in place. Um, doesn't have to support a lot of weight, so it's not a big problem. Uh, mark the area where it's going to be and use the hole punch to punch two of the rivets, uh, then remeasured and punch the other two. I beveled the edges to clean them up a little bit, then used a stitching groover to just put a couple of lines in there. And instead of antiquing this one, I just used some dye. Dyed the edges black before I burnished them. Gave it a coat of Lexol and then a coat of Carnuba wax the next day when it had dried a little bit. And last but not least, set the rivets for the strap. This was a lot of fun to build. Uh, I spent a little bit of time walking around the house with it attached to my hip just because, you know, who doesn't want to walk around with a sword on their hip? Uh, but no, in all seriousness, marching in the parade this year, and I want to make sure that this thing is going to be something that I can wear for a couple hours without being aggravated. I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to bang into my legs. Uh, it swings around a little bit, but the suspension system does a really good job of holding it where it's supposed to be. Um, pretty excited about it. Had a lot of fun. Still some finalizing work to do. I've got to cut the straps, but I want to think on that and make sure that I have a good solid plan before I start doing anything real permanent. I will see you next week.